So it's Saturday the 11th of March today. It's the morning, it's about like 10 o'clock maybe. I woke up in a different forest, packed everything up, went to the supermarket just to get a few vegetables for lunch, and I've come back to another forest, literally just for one reason. And I know this wood really, really well. And uh, the reason I've come here is to find birch trees. Here we are, fallen birch. That's a birch, that's a birch. Got two birches over there. Quite a lot of birches here. That's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, so today I'm actually feeling a bit under the weather. I can feel that my glands are swollen. I've got a slightly sore throat and I just, I feel quite exhausted and I'm in that place where I, I know that like in the next couple of days I really need to be looking after myself so that I don't kind of develop a cold. What I normally do in this situation when I do feel a bit ill is, uh, you know, the place I want to be honestly is the forest because I know I can be warm here, I can be dry, I can be comfortable. I can happily spend the day here today just kind of relaxing, resting, recovering. And the reason I came here to look for these birch trees is kind of for two reasons actually. So birch trees are just one of my favourite, favourite trees uh, and they're incredibly useful. At this time of year, so it's like, as I said, it's the 11th of March today. And normally, sort of around the first two weeks of March, there's a small window in which you can actually tap these trees. It's basically just water that comes out, but it's birch water and so it's got all sorts of minerals and tiny bit of sugar as well and it's just a really refreshing kind of um, drink that you can kind of harvest from these trees at this time of year. So yeah, before I do anything else, I'm just going to start tapping this tree basically. Just tie like a normal kind of Siberian hitch up here. Very simply just tie this up. There you are. I might just shimmy that around. So while that's just kind of dripping away and collecting in there, I'll come back and check it in like an hour or so, see how it's getting on. So that's the first reason I came to find birch trees. But the other reason I came out to look for birch trees was to look for a fungus. Uh, and it's called the birch polypore. It's like a magical medicinal fungus. And I, I don't claim to know much about mushrooms or even foraging. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to learn and I'm, I'm trying to get better at that kind of thing. But this is a fungus that I, you know, whenever I see it, I recognize it straight away. It's one that I feel very confident in identifying. And it's one that humans have known about and used for thousands of years. And, uh, and it's, it's absolutely amazing. It's ridiculous. So I'm gonna see if I can find one. Actually, I think in that tree over there, I can see some already. They're quite a way up the tree. I don't know if you can see here and here. And yeah, just all the way up the tree, basically. And these very distinctive bracket fungus. And they're called birch polypores. And anyone who's familiar with being outdoors in sort of temperate regions like this will probably be very familiar with this. Uh, fungus because it's just so so useful in so many different ways. It might be a bit of a challenge to get them down. Might need just to get a long stick and poke it out. Oh, come on. Hey. Okay, so this one is not good actually especially on the underside. Yeah, got to keep looking really. It's actually getting quite late in the morning now. And so uh, I think I'm gonna set up a fire, start boiling some water for my breakfast because I haven't had breakfast yet. So I've just stumbled upon this fallen birch tree here. You can see a few very, very old birch potty paws. There and there. Yeah, you can see here as well, there's another, another birch potty paw. I mean, I don't know. I just know that, you know, younger sort of smoother ones are kind of better for what I'm looking looking for, basically. Yeah, they, you can see this bark just peeling off. Obviously, this tree doesn't really need it anymore. So, yep, I use that to light my fire. Yeah. 
it's the water boiling for my breakfast. Probably really late in the day now. I should have got here and had my breakfast straight away really, because I know it takes a while, so. Oh well, never mind. Pour that in. So good. Yeah, so after I've had a bit of breakfast, I'm gonna continue my search for the, uh, for the birch potty pour. All right, great breakfast. I think it's actually almost midday, so much more like brunch than breakfast. So I'm gonna go on a search now for the birch potty pour. I really wanna find one. Kinda of got my heart set on it now. You know, this is something I've wanted to try for ages. And there are loads of birch trees here. And I've seen lots of birch potty pours, but they've all just been a bit old and manky. So, yep, I'm gonna go for a bit of a search now. All right, there's quite a lot of birch trees down here amongst all these really mature, beautiful uh, hemlock, these are. But yeah, that, there we are. Oh, do you know what? That one looks brilliant. So I'm gonna take this, get the old knife, just cut it off here. Yeah, that's looking really good, I think. So this bracket fungus is just super, super useful. Basically like, it's got amazing medicinal properties. It's edible. You can use it to sharpen your knives. You can use it to make fire and you can use it to dress your wounds. So it's like this multi-purpose magic medicinal mushroom. <laughs> And it's amazing, you know. But I've never really tried it. I've, I've known all these things from just studying. But I've never actually tried it. So this is literally a first for me. And uh, loads of other people have made really, really comprehensive videos about what you can use it for and then, you know, various health benefits and all that kind of stuff. And so I'll make sure I include a link in the description below for all that if you're interested. But, but yeah, my idea is to make a tea from this, but I've heard the tea's quite bitter. Even though it's really good for you, it's not like the most tasty thing in the world. But birch water has got all sorts of minerals in it, and it's also got, you know, sugar content in there. So my idea is to like boil up the birch water that I've collected, and as that reduces, the concentration of sugar will go up and up. It's like reducing it to a syrup. Boil some of this in it, and then it will make a sort of tea, but then the you know the sugars in the birch water will sort of help it be less bitter and more sweet. And that's kind of my idea really. And so I just thought I'd give it a go. Hopefully it will help me you know fend off this cold and uh, yeah, just help me feel feel a lot better. So I've just taken off all the kind of porous bits on the underside and then just left with like this solid white flesh and if I just cut into it it's very very like tough you can just see it's like pure white almost like soft polystyrene inside that's the flesh that I'm going to sort of cut up and then boil in my tea but before I do that I obviously need to finish collecting my birch water all right you can see my belly can just down here Take a look. Please let there be some. Oh yes, look at that. Really good, I think that's plenty to be honest. Don't need any more than that. It's really nice and heavy. Brilliant. Really pleased about that. Boy. All right. So, got my birch water. Actually a really good amount in there. Actually I'm gonna give it a bit of a taste. I just love it, fresh out of the tree. Oh, it's so good. You know, it's very subtle, but it is kind of slightly sweet. It's almost like got a bit of a silky texture. It's really, really nice. Absolutely love it. But yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my birch water. I'm gonna get my birch potty pour and then use both to make a tea. You know, the birch water is really good for you. This is really good for you. I'm not feeling so good, and so hopefully this will just do me loads of good. Don't really know how to do this actually. Just 
teacups amount. Just a good amount actually. And save the rest for later. Probably see the uh, birch water bubbling away very nicely. And I can already see it's kind of starting to turn much more kind of yellowy, uh, much more dark in colour. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that to carry on kind of boiling and reducing. And when I feel good about it, I'll add the uh, birch potty pop and then start brewing my tea, which would be great. All right, so as I mentioned before, I, I went and got a few vegetables. I've got a carrot and parsnip and a few other root vegetables and just got like all sorts of stuff to make a soup. So I'm going to make a nice tasty vegetable kind of broth again to sort of help me feel better. I'm going to use the leftover birch water that I've collected. So here, and there's still quite a lot in there to make my soup in, basically. So, uh, yep, while that's boiling, I'm just going to start chopping my vegetables and then just slow cook the... Uh, slow cook my soup for the rest of the afternoon. So all my veggies, ready for my soup. Put this on through the other end. Be really careful not to spill my birch water. Nice. Okay, so I've just swapped these two round. So my soup is now kind of over the main heat. Uh, this is obviously still really hot. It was just boiling a second ago. It's still boiling a bit. I think for my tea, I just want it to be simmering. So yeah, I'm gonna add my birch potty pour. I'm not really sure how much to put in actually. I haven't got that much water in there. So I might just put a, just a few little bits in. I think that's probably fine. I think it's supposed to simmer it for quite a while, probably for like half an hour, 45 minutes, or maybe an hour. I'll probably just keep checking it. And apparently the water's supposed to go like a bit darker. It's a bit of an experiment, so we'll see how it goes. Also, it's raining, so I need to put my tarp up. Okay, so it's been about an hour, but my tea's been brewing. It's time to try my tea. Use some of this leak. my soup as well. Check it out. Oh, that's looking great. Wow, totally fogged up my lens. Oh, that is looking so good. All right, leak technique was pretty good, actually. I'm just gonna take this one off. It's really hot. Get the old knife. Open that up. You can kind of see it is definitely a darker color. Any of the bits of mushroom getting in. <laughs> oh dear, I think I must have reduced it down a bit too far. But you know, there is some in there. It's a nice colour. <sighs> Smells nice. Smells really nice. So, this is tea made purely from what I've harvested today from the forest. Hopefully, this contains all sorts of goodness, which is going to make me feel much, much better. That is, that is really good. That is really nice. It's actually really sweet. It's like sweet mushroomy goodness, really. I'm trying to figure out what it tastes like. It almost tastes slightly syrupy. You know, almost maple syrup kind of flavour to it, but very, very subtle. And then this kind of mushroomy, meaty kind of taste as well. It's it's really good. The only thing I'm sad about is there's not very much in there. There's like, you know, it's like half a cup of tea, really. Yeah, it's really good. That's amazing. I'm definitely doing that again. Next time, I'm gonna make a big batch of this because it's really, really good. I feel like that was a real success. I've never tried the mushroom before. I never tried making the tea before, so that was a bit of an experiment. But I'd heard that it can be quite bitter. And I think with the birch water, it balances out really, really nicely. But yeah, really pleased with that. And apparently this is full of all sorts of goodness. So I feel like it's done me good. So uh, as you can probably see, I'm losing light now. And uh, it's just started to rain again. So uh, yeah, feel really pleased about my mushroom tea.
Next thing to try is hallucinogenics. <laughs>